Good evening, we team B. This is William and myself, Johnny, my partner, Manuel. Uh, our project is the Demolisher, as everybody already saw it in the last presentation. Uh, to, to make things a little bit easy for each of us, we, we divided the task in the following way. William was in charge of the robot construction, fabrication, the logic development. I myself did some of the programming along with my other team members. Manuel did the main program. He also worked on the, on the track design and the obstacle detection. The, the concept for our project is that since for the first project that we had done, we realized that although we programmed our robot to avoid the obstacle, it still went ahead and destroyed it. So this time we wanted to purposely have the robot go find the obstacle and destroy it. So we, we, develop, we wanted to develop a, a robot that would navigate a space and destroy random objects. And the, the robot must, must also be able to avoid any obstacle that it finds in its path that's not uh, a standing object. Mo motivation was we, also, we wanted to destroy the obstacle, which is fun doing. We also wanted to have exposure to, to new technology. As you can see, we're not using the regular bullback that everybody else used in the first project. And we also wanted to have fun. So William is going to go over the initial design that we had and how we change it along the way. Yeah, you, you see, you know, right here, this doesn't look the same, you know, with respect to this one. We wanted to use a wrecking ball, and we were supposed to use two servos in order to control the motion going up and, uh, and rotating. But we were having some problems because of the, the wrecking ball when it was swinging, you know, back and forth. We were losing the, actually changing the center of mass constantly. So we ended up changing the design and tried to facilitate it a little bit. So, um, yeah, in order to control these motions right here, to go up and down, we wanted to use a warm gear drive that um, in the end we couldn't find the part. We would try to improvise something, but uh, it didn't work okay. So we had to end up with this. Uh, we had two ideas in the beginning to make that the, the motion to uh, actually swing the, the pendulum, if we can call it like that, the wrecking ball. One was to move the entire, uh, let's say, platform of the robot, just to move it like this in order to swing the, the ball. And the other one was just using two servos, one to control the height and the other one to do the swinging while uh, keeping the, the robot in the same position. Ben? Yeah, ben. So, as you see, it's the final design. Uh, we were adding right here, like uh, we have two micro switches. They're supposed to tell the. Don't turn the switches off of the mic. It was on, but anyways. Uh, okay, we have two micro switches that are supposed to say uh, if, let's say, if it knocks down an obstacle, it's supposed to tell you if the obstacle is right in the middle of the way. So it's supposed to avoid it. So that's why we're putting these micro switches. And what we're thinking of, we put some uh, straws right there because since the obstacles since the micro switches are all the way to the end it was a little hard to detect the the middle part you know it, it needs to actually heat it and the the obstacle needs to be bigger than this so that you can actually sense it but the straws were not doing a good job because it, it was keeping the switch all the time uh, pressed so it was giving wrong signals so um, we end up using just leaving it like that and uh, we have the ultrasonic sensor, we have the controller, we have two bumper switches right here in case it backs up, and, uh, and this right here is the shaft encoder. It's supposed to control the revolutions of the, of the motor, so in case we swing it once, let's, we call this a chopping bar. If it, swing it, it swings it once and uh, it doesn't actually knock it over, it, it will continue rotating until it stops, you know, for three revolutions or something like that. And this sensor is supposed to control it. So, the components that we use, I already said something about it. Uh, just, uh, it's worth mentioning these two. 120 degree servo, which is the one that we use for the ultrasonic sensor to go from zero to 120 in order to detect the obstacles right in front. And uh, the other one will be the photo sensors because one of the things that we wanted to do, we wanted to have uh, the motor always in, in control of the place, of the space. 
That's why we're putting this track right here with the white color and black in on the border. So it's supposed to, whenever it goes to the border and it says something black, it's supposed to go back. So it won't fall off the table. And right now, Manny's going to talk about the program. Um, basically, the, the robot is, uh, as William said, it, it, uh, it, it scans the track and it finds the closest obstacle. Once it finds the closest obstacle, it'll then rotate towards it and then charge towards the obstacle until it gets to the right distance. Um, as I said, it, it uh, navigates the obstacle course, it detects and knocks down obstacles, and uh, it continues to navigate the course while avoiding the rubble w by way of the sensors. Um, program highlights. Uh, in order for the chopping block to swing and, and hit the object, we have to have the, the correct distance away from the object. For example, we need to we need to have the robot at this position. So if 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 we calculate this distance, we have the robot turn towards it and then walk towards it, and then go into the chopping motion when it's in in range. Again, the black and white surface detection to keep it within the boundaries of the track, and uh, we use ultrasonic to detect the obstacles. Um, we use EZC as as Team A did as well. It's it it uh. It, it makes program easy in the sense that you don't have to deal with all the syntax and like the colons and the, all the little stuff, but uh, it, it doesn't get rid of the fact that you have to know how to program. In other words, you, you, you have to program by way of a flowchart. As you can see in this program, we have a, a two, a one while loop that runs for infinity, and uh, we have the seek subroutine and the destroy subroutine. When it's in the seek mode, it's going to keep scanning the track and moving around until it finds the object. Once it finds the object, it switches the, the demolition mode switch to one, and then it goes into the destroy mode. In the destroy mode, it, uh, it keeps um, homing in on the object and getting closer to it, and homing in and getting closer to it until it gets uh, in, in range of, to knock it down. Uh, one of the problems that we had was that for for the ultra sense the ultrasonic sensor to read perfectly you have to have if your object is flat it needs to be positioned normal to the sensor in other words the 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 signal needs to go and bounce directly back into the sensor however if this were flat and you rotate the object it can no longer read the object so uh in order to combat that we decided to make uh objects that were concave so that it would give us more of a, a degree, or rather a freedom to detect obstacles at different positions. This is a, a video of our robot in action. As you can see, it's scanning the field and looking for the nearest obstacle, which is close to it. And again, it'll scan again and then position itself again to make sure it's in the right position. And then lastly, it'll scan and make sure it's within range. <laughs>